Hey everyone, I'm Sean Farrell here. I'm just going to share a few charts and insights from our uh, prior weekly notes uh, and perhaps touch upon Fed Chair Powell's comments today. First things first, you know, our view since the start of this year, I'm sure you're familiar uh, by now, our view has been uh, rather constructive on crypto and, and wider risk assets uh, due to one, more conducive liquidity dynamics globally. Uh, this has been assisted by liquidity injections by the PBOC and BOJ, as well as favorable domestic liquidity conditions. Uh, and this has been buoyed by uh, the debt ceiling impasse, ironically, because the Treasury has not been able to finance its operations with new issuances, uh, which kind of removes a, a whole other liquidity sink from uh, you know the, the liquidity available for uh, public and pub, private market investors. And so these liquidity dynamics, coupled with the fact that crypto really washed out all of the excess leverage, found uh, strong price discovery uh, at the lows in November. Coupled with that, you know, we, we were pretty confident in a constructive uh, first half of this year. Fast forward to the past few weeks, and we've seen some pretty some pretty interesting consolidation, repricing in rates that. I think many could classify as violent. Further, we had Jay Powell testify before Congress today and add fuel to the hawkish fire, increasing uh, the probability of a 50 bips rate increase in March to over 50%. And that's that's as priced by the futures market. Now, there are two ways to look at this. One, you can look at this chart and be like, hey, the Fed is on a mission. They're going to be higher for longer. The terminal rate's going to keep going up. Uh, and there's no way that risk assets, which would include crypto, can thrive in this environment. Markets are forward discounting mechanisms, right? And so um, I think what we've seen, and as you know, characterized by the relative robustness in crypto, I think crypto assets have largely priced in these rate increases. And that's why we've kind of churned sideways over the past several weeks. Had such a stark increase in rate expectations happen last year, uh, I think we would have had we would have seen a pretty uh, drastic drawdown. And so with that in mind, um, we're rather encouraged. We've remained constructive uh, throughout the rest of the first half of this year. And here you see the target rate probabilities for the March Fed meeting. You can see that now there is over a 60% chance of a 50 bit rate increase. So you need to ask yourself, which way is the path of the least resistance for crypto? And this is kind of what we wrote about last week. It's our view that at some point, rates are going to find a ceiling. Yields are going to pause, and bond volatility is going to come down. And when that does, you know there is going to be a increase in net liquidity that is favorable for risk assets. And so, you know, it's our view that it is still right to buy any dips, uh, particularly in the majors. Uh, but of course, the next ten days with jobs data, inflation-related data coming out, you know, it's going to be really important to re-digest, assess the market's interpretation of that data. And of course, we'll always be assessing and reassessing um, how and what the market is pricing in. But for now, we've remained constructive. <laughs>